why why would Morbius be in the only way I can see Morbius being intrigued is if he sincerely meant let's do some good. <laughs> <I know. laughs> because that's who Morbius' character is in this movie. He want he would rather do some good. But if it is a setup for the Sinister Six to do some bad, I'm like, why would he be intrigued? What's intriguing about what he's heard so far? Why is the question not, what do you mean? What kind <laughs> why? of good are you talking about? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the Reject Nation, listen, listen loud and clear. We have no interest in doing a Morbius spoiler talk. <laughs> Zero. They did it for us. us. <laughs> they did it all for us before <laughs> it came out. But here's what we do want to talk about. The best post credit scenes to have ever existed in the history of Marvel. That's right. We just clickbaited you with oh. saying they're the worst. We're here to convince you that they're the best ones ever. Played you. Played you. you idiots. <sighs> Click the like button and leave yeah. a comment. See, that's what you get for being dumb. Yeah. Anyway. Engage with us. <laughs> no, these were the worst post credit scenes I think ever in Marvel <laughs> uh, since the MCU began. I don't think anything really topped those amazing Spider-Man 2 ones, but damn, they... <laughs> these are magically bad. They are done themselves! <laughs> There's so many things and so few things all at once. Real quick recap. Of what happens in Morbius. He's a doctor with a blood condition, ends up experimenting with bats, because who wouldn't? And to then find a way to, you know, cure himself, becomes a vampire along the way. But it's like, ah, I don't want to be a bad vampire, though. End of movie. Okay, that's <laughs> pretty much the film. And then they do this. They cut to, now, both of the post credit scenes, they play in between credits, so I think they're technically mid-credit scenes, but who's, who really says mid-credit? You guys want to be, like, technical, semantic assholes in the comments? <laughs> People call them post Post credit scene. It cuts to the first post credit scene. It immediately turns into what I can only describe as a sizzle reel <laughs> for the Vulture spinoff yeah. movie. <laughs> like obviously they're not going to make this Vulture spinoff movie because they they did it all here <laughs> in 30 seconds or less. <laughs> the first thing you see, the breaking in the sky. Like oh my God, that's the Doctor Strange spell no from way No home. Way Home. That's what's happening right now. And then you see Adrian. Adrian Toomes, Michael Keaton Vulture, transported into a cell, which raised some questions already <laughs> of, okay, I thought the spell was supposed to send people home. Even that, even though it's raised some questions, I'm like, okay, questions are fine. I can roll with it. Let's see what they do. And then they just screw it all up in like 10 seconds. Yeah. The second freaking Michael Keaton gets there, looks Hope the food's better in this joint. <laughs> it's like, what? That was my first time. I'm like, he's a what? Cool comic book guy. Of course he's unfazed. <laughs> and it's just like, all right, I'll adjust. I guess I gotta use this multiverse thing to my advantage. <laughs> just adjust. He doesn't know what's going on, but sure. Well, just, I got this under control. I got Why no not? records of my existence here. I'll just get out of jail and go do stuff. Somehow felt very out of character to me. It didn't flow right. It didn't seem right. No element of surprise. It seemed like they didn't tell Michael Keaton what was going on. We can't tell him because it might ruin it. Just act a little, be like, just say this line. It felt that way. To me, Adrian Toomes, man who did everything for his family, <laughs> and he's being transported to nowhere in some like magical way. Yeah. <laughs> You'd think he'd be a little freaked out. Even the spider people were a little freaked out. Like, how did I get here? What's oh. going on? But Adrian Toomes, <laughs> hope food's better in this joint. Yeah, you know, I built a suit once out of alien technology. I got this. <laughs> and then it cuts to the news report footage, right? What do they say on the news? Yeah, they say something about like, oh, Adrian Toomes, he claims he just showed up here. There's a high chance he's going to be let out of jail, basically. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. Yeah, that he'll be released it's right like, away because we don't know who he is. Yeah, and we're not going to look into that. And then apparently it just ends right there. That's, That's scene one. Yep. Like, what a stupid ass thing. And then it just started making me ask more questions of what was the original post credits? What was the original inclusion? It's like so obvious that when he's transported to the prison, that's a reshoot they inserted because this had to come out after No Way Home now. It legit feels like there was a plot line in the movie, probably in the scene where he was locked up and in the orange jumpsuit where he probably would have run into or met Adrian Toomes there that they then took out of the movie and then went, what's like one or two of the most important bullet points from that to get the point across? Let's make that the post credit scene. And then the second post credit scene. 
They outdid themselves. <laughs> I already thought the first one was bad enough. Oh, no. Cut to Morbius driving on the highway. Where is he going? <laughs> Where is he? I mean, I thought he could fly now. I thought, I thought he flies. He's saving his energy for crying. So he gets called two in the morning. Apparently he's like flying under the radar now. Why would you be speeding so fast in a car then? <laughs> Wouldn't you want to be flying away? He's got echolocation to sense cops, you know. So apparently he feels like he's got some type of threatening, like there's a threat coming. Then Vulture comes flying in. He's got a suit now. No one knows why or Check how. Check my gear out. No one knows how. Look how impressive <laughs> I am, Michael Morbius. He shows up and then it just had me go, what message <laughs> did he send Morbius initially to compel him to drive out at near three in the morning <laughs> when he shows up and he's like, this is a this is a threatening situation, not a good one. Yeah, like, what yeah, message yeah. did he send him? I feel like it would be way easier to get Michael Morbius on board with you if you just contacted him as Adrian Tube. Honestly, yeah. the biggest issue I had with this scene is it felt out of character for both of them And it was so apparent they did not have the actors in the same scene at least it felt that way It felt like they had some voiceover recordings for Michael Keaton They had him do and then they had Jared Leto do a few reactionary takes and then they were like we'll figure it out in editing yeah. <laughs> Just put it in editing. And we'll figure it out then it looks <laughs> like they repurposed a car commercial and then did a couple shot reverse shots of Jared Leto in a field and then made that the scene <laughs> so the first thing that Michael Keaton says is like, thanks for meeting with me, Doc. It's it's like, this is not, what is this? What is the tone what of this? What is your familial banter uh, here? Thanks for meeting with me, Doc. Yeah. <laughs> like, what is this? He seemed like he like called the meeting at like three in the morning and it just seemed yeah. like such a, hey, how's it going? Sorry to call you here under such weird circumstances. Can't be too careful. And then he says, I don't know how I got here. I think it has something to do with Spider-Man. Spider -Man. <laughs> it's just like such bad dialogue. Then it just, it further drove home that point. It further drove home like, why is he just adjusting to here and not trying to figure out how to get home to his wife and kid? Like, why is he not trying to figure any of this out? And again, why would Vulture want to set up a Sinister Six instead of trying to figure out how to get back home? Like, what's the motive here exactly? And then to make things more confusing, he goes on to say, I'm thinking uh, you and I and a couple other people like us, we could put together a team. Do just some good. Do some good. And then Morbius is just like intriguing. And then it just ends. <laughs> And I'm like, wait, wait, there's a whole character turn in here and a whole bunch of other mumbo jumbo that, that we have no context for for either of them in this situation. And it's just more confusing. Because yeah. then is it like real good or sarcastic good? Yeah, like do some good, like, oh, we can make good money, do like criminal yeah. activities. Or is, are they going to try to make the Sinister Six a, a team of... Good. There's a dirty dozen, oh, there's a dirty yeah. half dozen now. Why, why would Morbius be, in, the only way I can see Morbius being intrigued is if he sincerely meant let's do some good. <laughs> I know. <laughs> because that's who Morbius' character is in this movie. He wa he would rather do some good. But if it is a setup for the Sinister Six to do some bad, <laughs> I'm like, why would he be intrigued? What's intriguing about what he's heard so far? Why is the question not, what do you mean? What <laughs> kind of good are you talking about? Because you just presented me a display of power rather than a display of intent and benevolence, you know? It shouldn't end on intriguing. It's like it should end on what are you talking about? And, and how is Venom going to figure into that too? Because you know he's going to be part of that team and Venom is a character already established to want to do a little good. Actual good. Whereas like the Vulture, that doesn't seem like the MO yet at all. Question the rules of the spell, which is something I think they can explain away a little bit better. Oh, yeah. That seems like it's a combination of a bunch of deleted things. It didn't feel real. <laughs> it, <laughs> like, it does feel like it was made a couple days ago. It, it really does. It felt like a marketing team put together something last minute, like, let's make some readjustments. <laughs> let's, let's let's do it like this. Well, what are some discarded takes we can use? Let's just figure something out based on that. It seemed like they didn't tell Jared Leto any direction. <laughs> and they were like, just do it a few times and we'll see which one's best yeah. for this. And same thing with Michael Keaton. Like, it's, it really got the sense that Michael Keaton didn't even know what he was talking about. The whole setup is just confusing, goes against character for both of them in so many ways. I thought they were poorly put together, poorly executed, 
confusing, funny, for all the wrong reasons. And uh, they feel like a weird micro movie. <laughs> yeah. And they make the previous whole movie you just saw feel worse for having seen. Yes. Is, I think, part of it, too. Keep it up, Sony. <laughs> Keep it up. I'm really excited for whatever your Sinister Six movie turns out to be. I thought that is so much worse of a Sinister Six setup. And the director confirms what he's doing. That is so much worse of a Sinister Six setup than what The Amazing Spider-Man 2 did. Yeah. Like, that that was like, oh god, brother, when that happened. But at least in some way they established that there's shady things they're building here at Oscorp. Yeah. Here this is just comes out of nowhere. <laughs> yes. Nowhere. This is so bad. And it, and it all harkens toward a Sinister Six that's actually just a team of, is just the Suicide Squad or something. A team of anti-heroes who ultimately are not going to be allowed to be that sinister. <laughs> anyway, guys, leave your thoughts down below. Do you love it? Uh, that's how you sound. <laughs>